there, and welcome back to Word Soda for Life. Surely, you're just as excited about this soda as I am. Ah? Ah? Ah, you get it. Anyway, welcome back. Today, we are trying 7-Up's Shirley Temple Soda. Uh, shout out to my boss, Kevin, for grabbing me a can, um, because I had only seen it in 2 liters and 12 packs, and if this was it good? I didn't want to be saddled with 11 other different cans. Uh, so they had already purchased it and gave me one. So kudos to them. <laughs> um, but anyway, so talking about Shirley Temples in general, Shirley Temples were one of my favorite drinks as a kid. I am still a sucker for a bottle of grenadine. Uh, in fact, one time my dad and I had an argument, and to make up for it, he went to the store and came back with a bottle of grenadine as an apology. No, Mr. Weird, that will not work now. I demand more than one bottle of grenadine. Um, but anyway, so I, I am a sucker for a Shirley Temple. And um, so I'm excited to try this soda. But as I was thinking about like what to highlight for the soda to begin with, I was like, oh, well, uh, surely I've covered 7-Up on the channel before, so I don't need to do the history. Um, but I, I check, right? Turns out I have never actually covered the history of 7-Up. Now, I've, I've talked about it a little bit with Sprite, um, which we've got a few of those. But, um, yeah, 7-Up doesn't tend to, like, really stray from their lemon-lime roots, uh, with the exception of, oddly enough, Cherry 7-Up, which does beg the question, if we already have Cherry 7-Up, why do we need a Shirley Temple 7-Up? What is the market difference? Uh, we will get into that. But... Um, but they don't stray very much from the formula. That being said, they also, um, I don't see myself trying myriad Shirley Temple flavored sodas either. Um, so I was kind of stuck between deciding whether I wanted to talk about the history of 7-Up or the history of Shirley Temple, and I landed on both. So you're both very, <laughs> all two of you who watch this channel are very lucky. We are about to talk about both, uh, the history of 7-Up and Shirley Temple's. We're going to talk about 7-Up first, um, just because it's got the longer staying power. Uh, in 19, around the 1920s, this dude named Charles Leeper Grigg creates a company called The Howdy Corporation, which, if you're me, feels like the thing that you like give a fake name to until you figure out exactly what you're going to actually call your company, but like kudos to you. Um, but in 1929, this guy decides... You know, he's come out with this soda, right? Uh, it's called Bib Label Lithiated Lemon Lime Soda. Um, if that's not a mouthful, I don't know what is. Um, but it's called 7-Up. Now, there's no actual real reason for it. People debate on the origins of why it's actually called 7-Up. But, like, um, there's not a real good origin story. Um, but anyway, so he creates this soda and releases it in 1929. In fact, he releases it in 1929, two weeks before the Wall Street crash. And you think to yourself when you hear that, that's terrible timing. Like, you release a new product right before, you know, what eventually becomes the Great Depression. But hear me out. This is actually a great thing of right place, right time. Because if you remember what it was originally called, the word in there, lithiated, that's lithium, guys. Um, that is a mood-stabilizing drug inside of a soda. Um, this is completely just right place, right time for the soda. Um, because as everybody's feeling really sad and depressed, um, cool, just buy soda laced with lithium. Um, this is actually viewed as another patent medicine. We've talked about that multiple times. And in fact, heck, we talked about that last week, like the Wild West of soda creation, where you just kind of put some things in fizzy water and are like, hope this helps. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of a in a dark way, right place, right time for this soda. Uh, however, if you're buying 7-Up today, don't get your hopes up. If you feel happy after you drink 7-Up, that's because you like bubbles. Um, because they removed the lithium in 1936. So sorry, not sorry. Um, but speaking of things coming up in the Great Depression, right place, right time, let's also talk about Shirley Temple. Uh, if you haven't heard of Shirley Temple, the Drake, you've probably heard of Shirley Temple, the child actress. Um, and if you haven't to both, I mean, kudos. I, today you learn, right? Um, but let's talk about this. So Shirley Temple, another uh, product of the Great Depression, um, 
childhood star. People were going to the cinema to see her because cinema was cheap. She's happy. She's dancing. She's like a breath of fresh air. But so you're a pint-sized childhood star in Hollywood in the 1930s. Um, so you're like wandering around. You're having to go to social events. You're having to go to restaurants. You have to see and be seen. Like, um, And so rumor has it, because guess what? This is another one in which the origin of why this was created is very, very murky. Um, you know, you're out with your parents. You're looking at people drinking because again great depression who doesn't need a little pick me up um and you see all these adults drinking like these fancy drinks and you say to yourself well where's my fancy drink um so somebody comes around and is like i got you shirley temple and so they throw together a, a ginger ale grenadine and a cherry on top um which screams i am a pint-sized star who gets their own cocktail without any alcohol in it um Note how I was exceedingly vague about this because, again, as I talked about, there is no actual origin story. Like, there's no one smoking gun that says this place here created it. Uh, there's a couple places in the 1930s that lay claim to it. Um, there's a place called Chasen's, and there's also a place called the Brown Derby. Now, if you remember the Brown Derby, we've talked about that before. Uh, when we tried the Cock and Bull's Bitter Orange Soda, um, the Brown Derby was where they created that ginger soda and created Moscow Mules, right? We, we talked about this place. So if nothing else, that place got around. Um, so everything old is new again. Um, as time goes on, though, the, the thing I described, ginger ale, grenadine, cherry, sounds delicious to me, but people will take their own spins on it. Um, so uh, lemon-lime soda starts replacing ginger ale, uh, which makes it even sweeter than it was before. Um, and grenadine becomes like debated between uh cherry right uh, i love me some red dye or pomegranate i mean so a, essentially grenadine is essentially a pomegranate syrup um but folks today including myself really associated with that egregiously angry red cherry folks cherry flavor and uh, so you start getting that split there and i'm going to show you in a minute um you know when i said about 7-Up already has a cherry 7-Up. Why do we need this? Well, take a look at the can. It has pomegranate in it. They have leaned into the traditional like variation on a Shirley Temple by making it have pomegranate in it in addition to cherry. Because again, we associate cherry with uh, a Shirley Temple which I found fascinating. I hadn't actually thought about that, but it, as I was like doing a little bit of research, I was like, oh, of course, pomegranate is actually the base. Um, but I really also think that this is very much an alliance of convenience um, because again, they have Cherry 7 up. So uh, like, what are we doing if not trying to come up with a reason and not just reskin something? Um, the other irony of this whole thing is that Shirley Temple herself actually hated Shirley Temple's. Um, she thought that it was overly sweet and actually tried to sue people who had bottled versions of uh, of the Shirley Temple and used her name to sell it, um, which makes sense. You're protecting the copyright. But imagine this. Your name becomes synonymous with something that you hate so much that you're willing to sue to get your name dissociated with it. And that's literally one of the two main things that people remember you by. Because, like, let's face it, not a lot of people out here talking about Shirley Temple when she becomes Shirley Temple Black and has an ambassador career. We're all talking about animal crackers in my soup and the drink. So that kind of has a suck for your legacy. Um, but with that... Let's see if these two Great Depression era, like, titans will come together to uh, cheer me up today. I mean, that makes it sound like I'm sad. I'm not sad. That was just a bad intro. Oh, well. But let's see how this all works out. So, again, looking at the can, um, I don't know if I really like this peach pastel thing that's happening. Um, it makes me think of a peach or... Uh, and, but I, what I do like, though, is that you can see the normal red dot with the 7-Up. Like, they've put a little package on it, making it kind of feel like it's a festive drink, a drink for a season. Uh, I do believe this is limited edition, so um, 
get it now if it's good or don't whatever I'm not your mom um, but I don't know if I'm really keen on the design uh, it, but it is it, it has classic elements of 7-up and again we've talked about before it's got the pomegranate and it's got cherry with that let's see what we're getting ourselves into Okay, so it smells like a tart soda. Um, I've had pomegranate juice before, um, and it's, so it smells a little bit like that. Um, but yeah, a little bit of tart. So let's see what it looks like when we pour it. Oh, look how pretty that is! But look, so, and again, coming back to this, how are you going to have this be so pale and then have this be so vibrantly red as if... Sorry, here we go. As if you poured a bunch of grenadine in it. Like, that doesn't make any sort of sense. Like, match the soda to the can. Um, okay, now that it has a little bit more breathing, I do smell a little bit of hint of, like, <laughs> I don't want to equate it to cherry cough syrup because that makes it sound unpalatable, but it does kind of remind me a little bit of cherry cough syrup, too, without the menthol. With that, thumbs up. Well, what I'm going to say is both Shirley Temple and my husband would hate this, <laughs> um, but I like it. It is it is quite sweet. There is a little bit of tartness underneath there, probably from the pomegranate, but overall it tastes like artificial cherry juice. <laughs> um, it needs to be cut with something, I think. Um, if nothing else, ice. Um... I would drink it, but I think one can, unless you're cutting it with something, is probably enough for me in one go. Um, it is just very sweet. Um, but, I mean, I would drink it again. So, I don't know if I'm going to commit to a 12-pack, but I might get a 2-liter. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it needs to be cut with something. You know what would really be nice with this? Something vanilla. Like, I think that would really cut it nicely. I mean, I'm tempted to say vanilla vodka because that's who I am as a person. But you could cut it with with something that is a little bit more of a mild um, dampener a little bit. Something that gets away, it gets more towards a base instead of an acid. And it would be quite good. Um, and not that it's bad. I, I Again, I would have another one. But it is, other than that slight tartness at the beginning, it's just all sweet cherry syrup forward and so if that is not what you're into don't go get this um but if you're cool with that like you know what would be good putting this in a float there you go so for our non-alcoholic drinkers let's honor miss miss temple for our non-alcoholic drinkers put it, pour this over some vanilla ice cream like you can't go wrong with that i think this would be amazing float drink stuff so um tldr i would get it I do like sweet things, um, but if you don't like cherry and you aren't okay with feeling your teeth rot out of your skull a little bit, I might avoid this. Um, I, I don't know. Four animal crackers out of five? <laughs> Next week, uh, we are pivoting to a soda that a lot of you have asked about, and I finally got my hands on a bottle. Fago has released a Jolly Green Apple Soda. So we'll be trying that next week in an attempt to try to have more tart things that will probably be super sweet in my mouth. I said what I said. Uh, until next time, drink weird. And if you're going to have a legacy, try not to have it associated with something you hate because that seems real freaking depressing. See you next time.